Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the MSI Clutch GM31 lightweight ARGB gaming mouse and charging dock. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at the MSI Clutch GM31 lightweight ARGB gaming mouse and charging dock, as I've already said in the intro. Anyway, let's move on. So this is the packaging, as you can see, typical MSI packaging. Something cool about this is the wireless mouse dock. I really do like this. It is a design which uh, some would argue has been slightly borrowed from another manufacturer, but we'll uh, overlook that at the moment. Now you've probably previously seen me review the GM41, which is kind of identical to this in pretty much most ways, although, this is designed to be a little bit more comfortable for smaller hands and potentially also smaller wallets. So this is the kind of the light version, I would say. So the GM31, obviously, is a number down in the stack, so there are some compromises. Now, one of which is the actual sensor. So we've downgraded the sensor, the optical sensor, down to a PAW3311 sensor from PixArt. So not quite as uh, sophisticated as the one in the GM41, but there is a cost saving that can be had with this as well. So in terms of retail pricing, this comes in at a significant cost reduction. Now there is something which we do need to speak about with this, obviously because the GM41 has been on the market a little bit longer, it is obviously gonna be getting some sort of price reductions here and there. So potentially you may find, depending where you're shopping, and because this is a pretty new product of game, depending when you're watching this video, you may find that the prices aren't that dissimilar which is where you get the benefit of slightly holding back and waiting. You may be able to pick this up on a spectacular bargain. So let's go over some of the main features. I'm gonna go through the packaging. So as you can see, obviously GM31 lightweight clutch game mouse. This mouse is not quite ambidextrous. It has a slight kind of lean towards right-handed people. Although as some of you may already know, I am left-handed. I find absolutely no problems using it whatsoever. And it is, like I said, it is designed for slightly smaller hands. So this is, not only lightweight, but it's also slightly more compact. So if you're finding that the GM41 or any of those GM range mice are a little bit too big for you, you may find this to be absolutely perfect. And we'll put the measurements on the screen for you now so you can see exactly what they are. But we're looking at 120 millimeters in length, 37 millimeters in height, and 64 millimeters wide at its widest point. Again, I'll put some uh, graphs up so you can see the exact sizes. So it is quite compact and actually, it does make a noticeable difference in the hand. For some people, you may find it to be a little bit too small and not quite as supportive, but for me, I find it absolutely fine. Again, left or right-handed is absolutely great. So other key features from the back, so ultralight gaming mouse. I wouldn't say it's ultralight. It's definitely lightweight. It's not as light as some that we've seen. This is coming in at somewhere around about 73 grams without the cable attached, which uh, isn't ultra lightweight, but it is certainly lighter than some other models, which can be anything up to kind of 100 gram. So you will notice a definite reduction in weight. So like I said, it's got the PAW3311 optical sensor. So this is providing up to 12,000 DPI optical sensor and is a one millisecond polling rate, all that kind of usual stuff, as we said. Uh, all speed, no wires. Yep, yeah, it pretty much does what it says. The interesting thing is actually, you do get an incredible lifespan on the battery. So if you're one of those people that has kind of range anxiety for how long your mouse is gonna actually last, on a full charge, this will last anywhere up to somewhere in the region about 110 hours, which is absolutely incredible. So realistically, if you're playing on your computer, gaming for eight hours a day, yeah, it's gonna last a feral time. So you're probably gonna need to charge it once a week, but never fear, MSI quick charging comes to the rescue. So if you get to the point where you're about to go into a battle, and your mouse is completely flat, well, you've got two options. First, you can plug in the cable because it is actually supported as a wired or wireless mouse. You can choose to do either, or you can put it on the charging dock, and if you put it on for about five minutes, you get about five hours worth of use from it. They do say on the website, if you put it on for 10 minutes, you get some of the reason about seven hours, but I find five minutes on there, go make a cup of tea or something, come back, and you've got a good five hours worth of use on there, so that's absolutely brilliant. Fast charging is the absolute pinnacle of wireless mouse technology because it's one of those things you don't want to have to worry about it and if there is going to be an issue yeah just plonk it on the charger for a little bit and you're good to go and also it will charge from both the actual charging dock itself or if you plug it in with the supplied usb type c cable you can plug it in and it will charge as you're using it so that's great so if you want to you can use it wired then unplug it then you've got that wireless freedom so yeah absolutely great so let's take a closer look at the actual mouse itself so as you can see it's a extremely nice design i love it 
the uh, diamond shapes on the side are very good. It's a kind of almost rubberized texture. I don't think it is rubber, but it's not plastic. It's somewhere kind of in between, but it does feel extremely grippy, so I like that a lot. You've also got the two side buttons on there, so that's your forward and back, or whatever you program them to do. On the top, you've got your regular buttons, so your left click, right click, and you've got a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is actually really good as well. It's got that kind of diamond shape built into the scroll wheel. Very grippy, very sensitive as well, so a little bit of a notch there to it, not a great deal. Personally, I would like it to be a little bit more notchy, personally, but for those of you that like using the scroll wheel for uh, switching weapons, you're going to find it really fast and very accurate. So I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't let you hear what the actual buttons were like on the mouse itself. So we'll start off with a left click. Right click. Center button. Really nice and defined the center button. And then you've got the side buttons. These aren't Omron switches. They do sound similar though. So forward and the back button. And the last button, which I said about earlier, is the one on the bottom. So that is the sixth button technically, but it isn't programmable. It is purely for DPI, so we won't really look at that one. Scroll is pretty much silent. So there you go, there's the button noises. On the other side, because again, this is just a five button mouse, although technically it's a six button mouse, but we'll come to that a little bit later. You've got the diamond pattern on the side there again, and looking at the front of it, you can see where the right-handed kind of bias comes into it slightly, where it is raised slightly more on one side, so to be more supportive for right-handers, but again, equally usable for a lefty like myself. Uh, you've got obviously MSI Mystic Sync RGB support, as you can see there, so we've got the uh, the flashing dragon there at the moment. You can turn it off altogether if you want to, or you can choose your own custom settings, and you can get it to blend in with the rest of your MSI equipment should you want to for that cohesive look. On the bottom, so at the front, we've got the section there, so again, you can plug that in for wired connectivity, if I haven't mentioned that already once or twice. That also conveniently turns in to be a dongle storage unit, so if you want to leave this at home, but you just want to take your mouse with you, you can unplug the wireless dongle from the charging base, which we'll look at shortly, and it slots into there, so for transport purposes, that's awesome. Five PTFE gaming grade feet on the bottom, and they do slide around really nicely, whether it's on a desk, on a mat, whatever you choose to do, very slick, I like that a lot. You've also got a hardware on-off button, although you don't really need to do that, but if you're putting it into a bag or rucksack and taking it somewhere with you, then I would suggest doing that. You can just flick that off, and the mouse is off. Next up, you've got your DPI button, so that is a manual way of switching through your DPI settings. There's five built in, like I said, which you can program in the MSI sensor, which we'll take a look at shortly. Slap bang in the center, we've got our Pixart 3311 sensor rocking away, and you can see the charging prongs there, nice and easy to clean should you need to, and more PTFE feet at the bottom to stabilize the mouse. So that's pretty much it for the mouse. Let's take a look at the charging. So it does actually come with a friction-free cable, which is MSI's uh, own kind of take on friction-free, spelt with an X rather than, well, anyway, I digress. So the cable itself is pretty good, pretty lightweight, um, does seem to hold some of the kinks in, but yeah. Realistically, you're buying this as a wireless mouse, so that is just going to be something which you're going to trail down the side of your desk, so no worries there. Two meters in length, for those of you that are wondering if your tower is a little bit further away from the desk than you'd like. Looking at it as well, on the back you've got the MSI logo, nice design to it. You've also got this central section here where the USB dongle goes, so you can just unplug that and put it into the mouse should you want to. Potentially you could plug other things into there, although it does have a sticker on there, so MSI probably won't appreciate me saying this, but some lower powered devices will be fine in there. You could possibly transfer the old USB file should you need to. You've got your charging prongs there. All of this is magnetic as well. So when you actually put it onto the charging base, it just holds itself in place, which is uh, very cool. And also, if I've not mentioned already, the LED on there whilst charging does give you some kind of feedback of what the battery level is like. So it goes through gradients. So bright green is fully charged 100%, which is where we're at right now. As it goes down, it will dim through greens, then into amber, and then it'll go into orange, and then when things are getting a little bit uh, on the touchy side and you need a charge, it'll go to red. So, And also there's gonna be an on-screen pop-up should you install the MSI Center software on your PC. Okay, so let's take a look at the MSI Center. So if you head over into features, you'll probably find this is gonna be installed already. You wanna head over into gaming gear, 
and this will show you any of your peripherals which are part of MSI Center. So we've got our mouse and our keyboard. So if we go into our mouse, and you can see this is the Clutch GM31 lightweight wireless gaming mouse. You've got three profiles which can be stored on board. So you feel free to choose those and obviously rename them however you see fit. It gives you a readout of your current battery level. So currently we're at 100%, nice. Also tells you your firmware version. If there's an update to the firmware, that will be done automatically in the background. Don't worry about that at all. You also got the options for changing your five buttons. So your left, right, middle, your forward and backwards button, and you can configure those to various different options. So you can choose mouse buttons, DPI, macro, or you can actually disable the buttons. So if you don't like side buttons at all, go ahead and disable them. I'm gonna leave those as defaults. Obviously you can choose specific bindings for those. You also got the sensor options. So currently we are set to the DPI level three, which I like at 1600. You can choose anything between 100 or right away up to 12,000, which is the, the maximum that this particular sensor will actually allow. So set whatever you like there, click apply, and it will save your settings as per usual. So again, you can go through five different levels. You can select whichever one suits you. You've also got your polling rate, so you can choose that. 1000 hertz is the default. Again, depending on your USB ports, you may find that it's down a little bit lower than that, but that is the optimum one. Also, we've got angle snapping turned on, so that just straightens up lines, etc. You've also got LED auto sleep mode, so if you want to get the most out of your battery, turn that on, and when the device isn't being used after a few minutes, the LEDs will go out and go into sleep, so that's great. Again, it tells you your battery level there again. You've got your low battery warning OSD, so there's an on-screen display which you can enable or disable. You've also got the option for changing the opacity of said display, so when it pops up on your screen to say your battery's a little bit flat, then you can choose how much it kind of shows through and also you get your low battery warning there. So you can choose when it actually notifies you of your low battery. So when your battery gets to 30%, it will show for 20 seconds. If it's at 20%, it will show for 25 seconds. And when your battery's down to 10%, it will show for 30 seconds. So again, you can choose to configure those however you see fit. So yeah, that's uh, pretty good. There's uh, not really a great deal else you can do on here, you can, I did notice actually, one of the buttons, or some, any of the buttons, you can actually choose to set macros. So if you want to add a macro, you can add up to 30 macros. So you can record individual macros for things, which uh, yeah, is pretty good. So you can enable a macro on the buttons, should you wish to. And also you can name those however you see fit, like I said earlier. So yeah, overall it's uh, pretty decent. I like MSI Center, I won't lie, it's uh, it's pretty decent and it does what I like to do. Easy to configure and also because my motherboard, my keyboard and various other things are all compatible with MSI Center, it just makes it a nice place to actually go ahead and manage things. And also if you go in, you can actually register your product and get your warranties and all those kinds of cool things. So there you go, that is pretty much it for the MSI Center. So anyway, back to the dock uh, on the bottom, got some anti-slip rubber coating on there. So wherever you put it, it's not gonna slip around and actually it does when there's a little bit of weight on there. It doesn't really want to move around a bit, so that's uh, excellent. USB Type-C connection on the bottom, so you can unplug that. USB Type-C, then you can plug that into the mouse should you wish to. Again, it's all designed to fit in very snugly. Potentially, if you wanted to, you could probably change the cable out for another cable if you wanted to. Just take a uh, look at the actual cable head there to see if, if it will physically fit. It is a little bit fiddly because it is a little bit on the small side, but yeah, not much of a problem. And I think that is uh, pretty much it. So in terms of performance wise, I've been using this for about a week or so now, and I've been playing various games, Fortnite, uh, CSGO, using it in Windows, using it for video editing, all that kind of stuff. And to be honest with you, it's exactly as you'd expect from a high performance gaming mouse these days. It's accurate, it tracks well, it does what it's meant to do. Um, I haven't noticed any issues with wireless connectivity. It does have their own proprietary connectivity stuff built into it. So it does appear to be, it works basically as a wired mouse. I've not noticed any difference in latency or anything like that. And also I should mention, it does also support NVIDIA's reflex technology. So if you do want to kind of take advantage of that and take a look at what your um, kind of latencies and all that kind of stuff are, then you can certainly do that should you wish to. Now, when it comes to pricing at the moment, I've seen this lowest price at the moment here in the UK, somewhere in the region of about 55 pounds, which I think actually for a mouse of this quality with the charging dock and all that kind of stuff, 
I think it's absolutely bang on. I don't think they could do much wrong there. Although I have seen the initial release price for this in the United States of being somewhere in the region of nearer towards $100, which is yeah, a pretty big jump. So my advice to you, if you are planning to look for one of these GM31 mice, is do shop around, have a look around. I'll put some affiliated links in the video description and also some links to other stores, which I found in the UK specifically, which have been what I feel it to be an absolute bargain. Now this one, unfortunately, is a loaner from MSI UK, so I do have to send this one back, but don't worry, I will be looking out for bargains and if I find one, I'll definitely be posting it in our Discord and also in the YouTube comments and community tabs, so do check out that. If I do post it and you are interested in one of these, then it'll be up for a bargain, hopefully. So there we go. I think that is going to pretty much wrap things up for this one. This has been the MSI Clutch GM31 Lightweight ARGB Gaming Mouse and Charging Dock. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.